Sounds good. So this video tutorial is more like a video class. This is a must-know photography lens, the basics. It doesn't matter which brand are you using, I am using Canon for the most part. I have someone, someone, someone young over here also, but the brand isn't that important because uh, exposure is the same no matter which camera. Uh, the theory uh, is the same, the physics is exactly the same. So. The main job of a lens is to project the light in the camera sensor. By doing that, the lens is responsible for three things in photography. The field of view, okay, focus and the aperture. There is a number of types of lenses. But to simplify, we're going to separate the lenses in two types of lens. The prime lens, like this 50mm really cheap lens and the 24, 70 <laughs> lens that Daniel is holding there, okay? The main difference from the prime lens from the zoom lens is that the zoom lens have the ability of change his field of view. So to better explain the field of view and this millimeter lamber, number, number, na number, 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 I have the feeling that I am seeing it wrong. Number. And to explain this millimeter number, uh, let's convert millimeters into angle, like this 50 millimeter lens have horizontally, on the image horizontally, 40 degrees of field of view. The 14 millimeter lens have about 104 degrees, again, on the horizontal part of the image. C'est pour ça qu'on a fait les, les deux premières photos, avec ces, ces assautés et tout. Well everyone, now I am with a 14mm lens. This lens is a really, really strange lens to work. What we're gonna do is try to have some fun. I am putting the sun on the back of uh, Danielle, so she won't have the sun on her eyes. And now you're gonna use the flash on ATTL, so the flash will manage all the lights and things. And let's try to make this work. As it's extremely wide, the flash can't do a wide uh, shoot like that, so that's why you have this filter over here, so the light will be spread all through the, all the field of view of this lens. If you don't recognize any terms that I am saying now, it's no problem, we're gonna talk about that soon enough. I'm gonna be extremely low and you will jump. Get a little bit closer to me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, uh, get a little bit more closer. You can go extremely close with this lens. Okay, uh, if you can see, uh, just to give you an idea, I have your full height on your head still on the lens, so you can really go for it, okay? Okay, three, two, one, go. As you may realize by now, the smaller is the number of millimeters, the wider is the field of view. But not all cameras are built the same way. My camera have a full frame sensor, also called like a 35 millimeter sensor, and this sensor angle of view is the reference for all the other sensors. So if you don't realize what is happening, the teleprompter, it's not following what I am saying. Let's take the, um, the 50 mm lens as an example. If this lens was on an APS-C sensor size camera, that sensor have a crop of 1.6. So 50 multiplied by 1.6 is... Like 80 millimeters, come on! La réponse est là! This lens will be 80 millimeters full frame equivalent field of view. Normally in photography we say that this 50 millimeters it's 80 millimeters equivalent. That means if this lens is on a camera that have an APS-C sensor, it has the same field of view as this camera on 80 millimeters, so it has the same angle. If this lens was in a micro four thirds sensor, that a crop of two times, so two times multiplied by 50. 100? 100, <laughs> 100. <laughs> that means that this lens is 
100 mm equivalent. So at full frame camera, 100 mm have the same field of view as this 50 mm on a micro four thirds camera. Field of view is also uh, changing the compression of the image, okay? Blurry is the blurriness compression, the blurriness, blurriness, Blur, blur. <laughs> blur. Blurriness. Blurriness. Blurriness compression as well the distortion. So as an example of to show you this compression, I'm gonna make a portrait of Daniel with different uh, zoom lengths. Um, so I'm gonna start with a 14 millimeter lens, which isn't a good idea. Actually, it's not a fisheye lens. Okay, I hate fisheye lens. So I don't have one. Uh, I'm gonna make some different zoom range on the on different lenses. And what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I will go back as long as I am zooming in and I will always have the same frame, okay? So, let's do the first one. I'm also gonna do a portrait with a 24 millimeters at 50 millimeters, that is way much better. People prefer it like 50, 80 millimeters. We could going with the 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters, 300 millimeters and 600 millimeters. As you can see, I am using here um, 100, 300 millimeters, a really old lens. It's about 50 years old, this lens. And I am using a doubler. So like that, I have the double with the zoom with this lens, but I lose two stops of light. We're gonna talk about stops in a bit. Thank you, let's go to the shadow. As you can see, the wide angle distortion is much more aggressive and really unpleasant. I'm really sorry about that, okay? <laughs> but the extremely zoomed one is much more compressed and the autofocus area, it's more visible because of this compression. Also, this compression makes everything look flatter. Um, her ears are almost in the same plane as her own nose and that is not good, it's almost like cartoony. Okay. Uh, everything is flat. Uh, the door there will be almost at the same plane as your, uh, as your face. So that's, that is not good. But it could be worse. The wide angle lens, her nose becomes unreasonable bigger and her ears, it's, it's on the backside of her own head and showing me this picture to you makes Danielle want to kill me at my sleep. <laughs> you, do you want, to see the, you want to see the picture? I didn't show her yet the picture, so I'm gonna show, you, show her now the picture. You will be met? We'll see. <laughs> How mean and how big is your boyfriend? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. So you have that on your life now? Oh no, <laughs> terrible. Well then, let's go to the second point of this, of this video, talking about lenses, is the focus. Well, normally, um, focus is an element or elements on your lens that is responsible by focusing. So it's lens that move inside to focus the image. In uh, lame terms, let's call it, move the sharp area through the field of view. One thing to remember is that the closest is the focus to the camera, the smaller is the focus area. Uh, that's why we took the shot on the ground. Okay. Pas à moi, aligné vers moi, d'accord? Tu te fais comme ça, et après tu creuses les jambes. Comme ça. Ok, ça pique. <rire> Désolé. <rire> très beau, très bien. Ce qu'on va faire, ça sera une macro de tes yeux en fait. D'accord. So you're gonna hold it like this, and you're gonna try to get some light uh, from the, the other side. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes okay. when I am ready. And you are... Open. And like before, ok? Okay, done. Uh, usually macro lens, dedicated micro lens are extremely expensive. A really cheap solution. Just have some extension tubes. If you buy one of those, pay attention if it has the, 
the pins, the metallic pins to communicate with the lens. That will be very important for you guys. Here is the photo made at 80 millimeters with the model about three meters away, two meters away, uh, yeah, roughly. Yeah, and here's a photo made at 80 millimeters, but the model is at centimeters away, more like millimeters away. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> uh, see, the focus are much, much narrow. And the, finally, the Aperture Science and Portal Guns. Do you know that game? No? No. Nope. <laughs> and um, <laughs> if you did pay attention to the description of the photos until now, you may realize that the F number is always F8. F represents the aperture. And it was always F8, so it wasn't a variant in previous examples. Okay? Okay, Google. Define aperture. Here's the definition of aperture. An opening, hole or gap. Okay, Google doesn't help. Um, <laughs> aperture at its core, it's a formula to calculate how much resistance the light will face passing through the lens. The bigger is the number, the less light will hit the sensor. Usually lenses uses blades to change the aperture, working very similar to the eyes. So, the bigger is the F number, more close is the iris, less light gets in. I am repeating this thing two times, but it's okay. If someone asks you how fast is that lens, it's referring to the wide open level of aperture of your lens. That is the smallest number. If you did see the video photography, what is exposure, so Another video that I made with Jack, uh, you may know that the light is measured in stops. So here is a scale stop by stop. F1.4, F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16 and F22. And it could keep going. Each photographer should know this by heart. The 14mm lens and this, this lens here have a range of 6 stops. Okay, so is the maximum aperture and the minimal aperture have a range of six stops. Let's count them. Okay, no, it's boring. It, mm. If we, we were in the Sesame Street, yes, we're gonna count, count them, but not here. <laughs> we're not counting. Trust me, I have six stops of difference. This lens and that lens have a range of six stops of light. If it's bright light, like today, you can reduce the amount of light reaching the sensor by closing the aperture. But if it's dark, you can get more light by opening the aperture. Just a quick note, for example, this lens here have, Canon call it image stabilization, Nikon it's uh, vibration reduction, I think, VR, and um, Sony calls it uh, optical uh, whatever, so uh, image stabilization it's the same thing for everything. It gives you about two or three stops of stabilization when you are hand holding the camera and uh, yeah it's it's really cool to have especially if you are doing video. If you are doing video it's a good idea to keep your image stabilization on on the lenses. Open apertures, close and apertures, wide open, fast, slow. What is this on the final photo? Simple. The focus area. This has a focus range. Depth of field. Depth of field. More open is the aperture, the smaller is the number, the shallower is the depth of field. And the bigger is the F number, more focus area is available. Again, with the help here of Danielle, let's use the 50 millimeters as an example. I am photographing Danielle in different apertures. So you can see the image F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16 and F22. We can clearly see that the focus area is changing, the depth of field is changing. So, I want to just make a quick note here. I'm gonna show you three images side by side and zoom in. If you are seeing this in the computer uh, it's a good time to make this video full screen because i'm gonna zoom in on the pictures and i'm gonna show you the f2.8 the f8 and the f22 pictures so you can see 
that F22 and uh, F2, F2.8 are a bit softer than the F8 because that is the sweet point of this 50 millimeter lens is the F8. So when you buy a new lens, test out what is the sharpest um, aperture on your lens so you may know that when you are photographing otherwise. So well done, we reached the end. What I should do now? Okay, thank you very much for my personal assistant. Thank you very much to be here. Thank you, Jack, to be there, okay? Uh, thank you very much, Danielle, to be here also. Do you want to say something to my, to the people uh, who is watching this video? <laughs> well, thanks for watching anyway. Um... Promote your Instagram page something, come on. <laughs> so everyone, I will leave. Danielle have an awesome Instagram page as Jack has also. If you like my content, probably you will like also their content. So all the links are on the description. And um, here we go. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Drop a like if you learned something and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel. Until next time, see ya.